Okay, now once we know the theory of collection, let's start the implementation. And of course, this will make much more sense once we do it. So if you talk about collection, and I'm talking about the collection interface now, right? Remember we talked about collection API, which is a concept, right? So in this concept, we have multiple classes interface to work with. So the first interface we are exploring here is called a collection interface. And if you can see the collection interface belongs to java.util package. As we have seen before, most of the classes which we have used belongs to java.lang package. And that's why we have, we have not imported them. But if we talk about this collection interface, it belongs to a java.util package. In fact, uh, when you talk about all the collection classes interface belongs to this package, which is java.util. Okay, so we have to import that as well. So you can do that with the help of import and you can mention the package name and the interface name, which is collection. Now, once you say collection, you can create a collection of numbers, let's say, and then I can say new. Okay. Now, the only problem here is I can't say new collection, right? Because collection is the interface, right? Now you might be saying, hey, you know, it's simple. You can just create anonymous class, provide the implementation. Maybe I can try. But then if you can see the collection interface has so many methods and we have to define all the methods. See, when you talk about API, API simply means a, a library or some feature which you can simply use it. You don't have to implement them. Then what's the use of using an API, right? So what I will do now is I will remove the entire part. I don't want to, I don't want to define this method by myself. The second option we have is if you don't want to create your own class, can we use some inbuilt classes? And that's right. We have so many classes available which you can work with. So if I want to represent this, so basically on top, we have something called a collection, right? Now this is an interface which we are using. Now there are certain more interfaces which actually implements the collection. One of them is list. Uh, we have queue. Uh, we have uh, set. So all these base, all these classes or all these interfaces basically implements or basically extends the collection interface. And individually, these interfaces have their own class implementation. Example for list. Uh, one of the most famous one is add a list. So we can use this. For Q also we have different classes. For set we have a very famous class which is called has set. So we have different classes implementation. Example for Q we have something called DQ, which we can use. Uh, so for list we have array list. Uh, apart from array list we also have link list which we can use. If you have worked with data, data structures before, we have a concept of linked list as well. And then in most of the languages we implement them by ourselves, right? But then in collection API we get the implementation. In fact, in set also we have something called a uh, linked has set, but then the most famous one or simpler one is to use array list and has set for the set. Now, apart from this, if you talk about the concept of collection, the concept I'm talking about collection API, uh, we have one more thing to work with. We have something called a map, right? And map has multiple implementation, which we'll see when we start with map. Okay. So till, at this point, let's try to use either list or we can use set, but let's start with set uh, list here. So what I will do is instead of saying new collection, I can say new array list, and you can see this is a class. Ignore this angular bracket. I know it is coming from multiple times, but ignore that time bin. So we got this collection nums equal to new array list. Now in this nums, basically we can add values, okay? Uh, now, how do we add values? It's very simple. You can just simply say nums dot. Let's explore the methods. You can see, uh, we have method like add, we have methods add all, contains, uh, equals, for each. Okay, we'll see for each as well, which is very interesting. Uh, then we have notify, notify all, uh, remove. Then we have, we can also convert a collection into array. We have two array there. And then we have a wait method. But at this point, I just want to add the values, right? So I can just come back here and I can say add. And in this add, I can add values. So let's say I want to add value, which is six. So since this is numbers, I'm expecting that this will only have numbers. So I will just copy this code and I will try to add multiple values. So let's say this is five, uh, this is eight, and this is two. So basically we got this value, right? Now, ignore this uh, yellow zigzag lines here. We'll talk about that later. Okay, but yeah, there's an important concept which is coming up. But at this point, I, I got this collection, right? And I want to print this. Now, if you have an array, of course, you can also create array with these elements. But the problem there is you need to, you cannot simply print an array, right? You have to use a loop to print each element. But that's not the case with collection. I can simply come back here and I can say S out and I can print nums. And you can see if I try to run this code, if I say compile. Okay, so when you compile this code, 
there's no error, but you can say there's a warning here. Again, we'll talk about that warning in some time, but let's run this code and see what happens. And you can see we got the output. So we can directly print a collection. That's a beauty, okay? Uh, can we print this value one by one? Actually, we can, okay? So what you can do is uh, you can use a loop here. So I can say for, uh, we can use index values. Let's let's see, do, do we have index option here? So I can say nums dot, uh, if I say get, oh, unfortunately we don't have the indexing for collection API or collection interface here. No issue, I, I can use a uh, enhanced for loop. Remember we have used enhanced for loop with the loop. So I can say int n colon nums and I can print each n value. So I don't have to do this. Again, how do we use index? That we'll see later, but at this point, this should work. Okay, the only problem here is, okay, let's let's talk about the problem which we are getting this gray, uh, this yellow line here. See, the thing is when you talk about a collection, when you're getting nums here, right? See, in array, you specify the type as well. You say int nums, right? So you know that in this nums, you'll be having only integers. But when you talk about collection, nowhere we have talked about the type of it, how it will work, okay? And that's where what you have to do is, you can mention the type. And that's the error you're getting here. Because it says the values which you have added here is not actually numbers. These are object type, that's right. Uh, as we talked about integer, float, classes, all these classes basically extends the object class. And by default, the collection API works with objects. And this six, five, eight, two, they're not integers, they're objects. And that's why you cannot store that into integer. How do we solve this problem? So if you want to solve this problem, we can use a concept called generics. Okay, now how, how it works. So basically, where should we mention the type? Maybe what they could have done is, you know, this is what they have done in 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, but they realize one problem, right? Which is by default, all the values here are objects. So how do we specify? Maybe they could have created some extra classes by saying integer list, integer collection, string collection. What if you have your custom class like student? So it will be difficult for them to create all the classes, right? So what they did is they have given you one option where you can use angular brackets here. So just after the collection, use the angular bracket. And in that you mention the type of element you want to work with. So we are working with integers. So integer is basically a class. Uh, which is a wrapper class for the int type because int is primitive, integer is a class and uh, collection normally work with objects, not the primitive values. So if you want to store integer numbers, which is, you, have, you have to use a class integer. And you can see now there's no problem. There's no yellow zigzag lines and we got, the, we, there's no error here as well. Let's see if this works. I will say compile and run and you can see we got the values. Now, one more thing, why this type here is so important. See, it also helps you to, de to remove the bugs of your code. Now, what bugs it can be? Example, let's say, if I don't mention integer here, okay, let's say remove, if I remove this part and everything is object, right? And then here, what I'm doing is I am, uh, we can use enhanced for loop. The only thing is I can't use object here. I have, to, I can't use int, I have to use object. And then I'm converting this object into integer. So we can do that by typecasting it here. So I can I'm just type casting it to integer. In fact, we can do it outside as well. Uh, let me just do that. So I will say int num is equal to, I'm getting a num variable again, and I'm converting this n to the integer type. Okay, so you can see we got num. And what if this, with this num, I'm performing some operation? Because I want to perform the operation, that's why I can't use object. And now if you try to work with this, you can see again, we got the warning because we are not using type there. And if I run this code, it works, there's no problem. But what if by mistake, you're doing the code and you have added a number, but that too in double quotes, let's say five. Now what will happen? Okay, so let's see. If I compile this code, there's no problem. If I run this code, we got an exception. And it's bad, right? And this is also runtime exception. This is runtime error basically. We don't want this. And that's why I think this type of problem should come in compile time itself. So if you mention the type with the help of generics here, and if I mention integer here as well, now if you can see, we will get the compile time error, not runtime error. And that's why if you compile this code, okay, you can see we got a compile time error. And that's why it is better to put this type every time. So whenever you work with collection, always mention the type there. Cool, so that's how we use analyst and it has multiple methods. Now, the only problem is we are not using the 
we are not able to get the index value, right? See, the thing is, if we talk about ArrayList, as I mentioned uh, in the diagram as well, ArrayList is a class, if you can see here. So it's basically a class which implements a list, right? And if you talk about this list, list does have a method called get because list works with index values. So which one to use? Should I use a collection here or a list? Say if you want to use, if you just want to add values and fetch, collection makes sense. But if you really want to work with index value, instead of collection, we should use list because list supports index value. And you can see now I'm working with a list here. And now if I want to print a particular index value, let's say I want to fetch the second index value. So I can say nums dot get. As you can see we have a get method. And in this get you can mention two. So which is, it will, in fact, it will give you three, uh, it will give you eight, which is an index number two, All right? Let's try. I will say, in fact, let me just not print this loop, compile and okay, run. And you can see we got eight. So if you want to work with index, you can use list and list has some extra methods. If you can see, I can say nums dot add was there. Uh, we got get, we can also set the value in between with the index value and anything else. Yeah, we also have index of. So if you have an element, if you want to know the index of it, example, let's say I want to see, I want to find the index of this two value. So what I can do is I can say s out, uh, we'll say nums dot index of, I want to print the index of two, right? So two, I'm talking about the value now, or maybe, you know, this is, this looks like quite confusing. So I will say five. So index value is one. If I compile and run, you can see we got one there. So yeah, it has multiple methods and I would recommend you to explore more methods of list. And that's how you use what you work with list and ArrayList.